Welcome to the 700 Club. It's one of the largest expulsion of migrants since the 1950s. The U.S. is sending tens of thousands of Haitians back home. They flooded our southern border, trying to escape the chaos in their own country. The Haitian government doesn't want them back. It's asking the United States for a humanitarian moratorium on the deportations. Dale Hurd has the story. The U.S. is flying Haitians camped in a Texas border town back to their homeland and trying to block others from crossing the border from Mexico. Planes left the airport in Del Rio, Texas, on board some of the estimated 13,000 people, mostly Haitians, who were living in camps underneath this bridge on the border. We've never seen anything like this. This is completely and totally um, out of the norm of anything that we've ever seen. Crowds so massive they could be seen from far away. The Haitian migrants who had already been living in Central and South America before converging on the border do not want to return to their home country, which has been rocked by political violence and natural disasters like the recent earthquake. The White House expects to transfer 3,000 of the migrants away from the bridge by the end of today, saying they'll use a Trump-era health policy which permitted the expulsion of migrants without allowing them to seek asylum. We have authorities by reason of that special circumstance, and we will exercise those authorities. The Haitian government does not want them back. The New York Times reports Haiti is asking the U.S. for a humanitarian moratorium on the deportations. But overnight, Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas announced 600 more border agents are being sent to Texas to expedite the expulsions. Texas Senator Ted Cruz went to the Del Rio Bridge and tweeted this video of the thousands of Haitians. Border officials are now patrolling the river and stopping migrants from crossing into the U.S while officials try to prevent a humanitarian disaster under the bridge. We are bringing additional resources to assist with security, migrant care, transportation, and processing. We are providing food, water, portable toilets, towels, emergency medical technicians are available for first aid. The Haitian migrant crisis comes as the border has already been swamped by the highest number of migrants in 20 years, reaching over 200,000 in both July and August. Meanwhile, the Senate parliamentarian has blocked the Democrats' push to include a pathway to legal status for illegal migrants in their social spending plan, a big blow to the party's goal of immigration reform. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Well, these are absolutely incredible uh, stories that we're hearing about this current administration. And I have to put it out there. I, I think they're getting an absolute pass from the news media. I've never seen anything like this. And we've been reporting on the migration crisis since April and calling the, to account, why aren't we enforcing our own border? And that was back when it was 160,000, 170,000 a month. We're not now topping 200,000. But here's what happened. You had a news media on Friday afternoon covering this, covering with helicopter shots to show the direct link between Mexico, how they're crossing that river right by that spillway and then pooling around underneath that bridge. And the numbers that you could clearly see were enormous. What does the administration do? Well, they institute a no-fly zone. Imagine the Trump administration doing that. What kind of coverage would we see? Uh, what kind of outrage would we see from that? Um, and and we're, we're not getting any of that. But this isn't the only thing. A sitting U.S. president was censored by the parliament of Great Britain. Why? Because of the withdrawal from Afghanistan. I've never seen that that the parliament would censor a sitting president. Let me add to it, the incoming chancellor of Germany said the withdrawal from Afghanistan is a watershed event in NATO, that from now on, Germany would recognize that America was in it just to protect their own interest. And that's because of the withdrawal and how it put German citizens at risk inside of Afghanistan. Then let's add to it. For the first time, France has withdrawn their ambassador. 
That is an earthquake in diplomatic circles, and we're seeing practically no coverage of any one of these events. You add to it the vaccination policy, uh, where we're going to require all employers to either mandate vaccination or weekly test for every single employee. These things are just absolutely incredible, but there's no coverage. And I'll put it to you. Imagine Trump had done any one of these things. What would have happened? How many news reports? How much screaming on cable news would we have heard? But right now, we're not hearing it. Well, we've got some other news about the administration. Booster shots. Uh, is it recommended for people who've been vaccinated against COVID-19? Well, Ephraim Graham has the latest on this administration dilemma from the CBN Newsroom. Ephraim? Gordon, for now, a Food and Drug Administration panel has rejected booster shots for the general population for those who have gotten the Pfizer vaccine. Right now, the booster is just for those over 65 or at high risk of severe COVID. But Dr. Anthony Fauci says the FDA is a few weeks away from making a decision on booster shots for people who've gotten the Moderna and Johnson & Johnson vaccines. And Dr. Francis Collins, director of the National Institutes of Health, told Fox News he expects it will become clear in the next few weeks boosters will be necessary because the effectiveness of vaccines diminishes over time. And today, Pfizer said its COVID vaccine is safe and effective for children from 5 to age 11. South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem is drawing comparisons between the Biden administration and the good book, telling CBN News the actions taken so far are unbiblical. Noem making those comments as part of a wide-ranging interview where she discusses her pushback against vaccine mandates, abortion, and the spiritual state of America. Here's CBN's chief political analyst, David Brody. South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem says she's ready to fight the Biden administration's recent federal vaccine mandate for private businesses. What President Biden is doing by these mandates coming down to businesses and employers that employ more than 100 people is unconstitutional. Uh, the Constitution clearly states that there are limited powers for the federal government and that all other powers are delegated to the states. So I will, as soon as that guidance comes out, be filing litigation and it has told the president that I would see him in court. On the topic of vaccines and science, she lowered the boom on Dr. Fauci. What's your take on Fauci? Do you think he should be fired? Well, Fauci's done a grave disservice to this country. What he has done is discredited our health officials. He's been political. He's not been consistent. He has not followed the science. Uh, therefore, his credibility is down to zero. While Noam's praise for Fauci is non-existent, it's the opposite when it comes to Texas's pro-life heartbeat law. It may be controversial, but Noam is taking a stand. Do you want to see a South Dakota law just like Texas? What's your view on, on that? Well, we reached out immediately to those who drafted and worked on the Texas law and are consulting with them on how that bill would fit in our statute as well. So, yes, I think it was a fantastic win for us. She also went on the offensive on telemedicine abortions. Biden administration policy allows for women to get abortions without seeing an in-person doctor first. Her executive order did away with that in South Dakota. She says this administration has been ungodly. What they are doing and the actions they're taking um, are not biblical. Um, and I know they, they many times talk about being religious, um, but I think that it's really time for all of us to look at the actions of our leaders and see if they line up with the word of God. Which leads us to the spiritual state of our nation, a stand Noam says is crucial for our nation to survive. Where do you see this uh, fight playing out in America from a spiritual standpoint? Well, we've seen our society, our culture, degrade as we've removed God out of our lives and people become what they spend their time doing. I really believe that focusing on those foundational biblical principles that teach us that every life has value, every person has a purpose, uh, will recenter our kids and help us really heal this division that we see taking over our country. It's an uphill battle for sure. David Brody, CBN News. Another violent weekend in Chicago. At least six people killed and 37 wounded in shootings across the city. Around 2,500 people have been shot in Chicago this year, up 9% from last year. Across the country, murders are up 16% over last year. That is according to a recent report from the Council on Criminal Justice. 
In Washington, it is Democrats versus Democrats as the party tries to pass key bills in just the next few weeks. The biggest President Biden social spending plan, which would be the biggest expansion of government support since the New Deal in the 1930s, with a price tag of three and a half trillion dollars. Moderate Democrats like Joe Manchin and Kristen Sinema say they will not support spending that much. But Senator Bernie Sanders, who played a major role in designing the bill, says three and a half trillion is the minimum he'll accept. I have already made and my colleagues have made a major compromise going from six trillion down to three and a half trillion. But Axios reports Manchin wants to put off a vote on the bill until next year. And Congress must also vote soon on raising the government's debt ceiling. Republicans say they will not go along because of the Democrats' huge spending measures. Gordon? Well, once again, we're in a crisis, both in terms of the debt ceiling and then in terms of uh, can we figure out how to pass a budget? So, you know, you look at these numbers and, and for Bernie Sanders to say, well, I've already negotiated enough. I've come down from six trillion to three and a half trillion. Well, we don't have the three and a half trillion to spend. Uh, you, 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 you can't monetize your debt uh, forever. You know, I, I'm acquainted with the new money theory that the progressives and our government are keep touting that we don't have to worry about deficits anymore. Uh, but the last time I checked, inflation was ticking up. And you, you look at, at that, and then you're going to come on top of that and spend another $3.5 trillion. Uh, you're going to make the world awash in U.S. dollars and, you know, pretend like your debt doesn't exist. Well, when inflation goes up, the Federal Reserve will be forced to act, and they're going to have to raise interest rates. What does that mean? Well, then the interest rate on our own federal debt uh, starts to go up. And so just do the math on what's the interest on 10 trillion, 20 trillion, 30 trillion. And at some point in time, the interest payments on that 30 trillion of debt start to swamp our federal budget. We're no longer can we afford basic social programs. And uh, there was a study done by Bank of America a while ago talking about debt. At some point in time, you're not going to be able to fund your military. Well, when that time comes, what happens to America? We've got to get some statesmen looking at a longer picture and not this short term, you know, uh, what have you done for me lately? And uh, I keep saying it and I'll keep saying it again. You go back in history, 2,500 years, the formation of democracy in Greece. And what happened when the Democrat, the, these democracies, the people figured out they could f vote themselves the treasury? Well, whenever that happened, they weren't able to pay for a military anymore. And what happened is the democracy went away and a tyrant, a supposed savior, would come in. If you just give everything to me, I'll take care of it. Uh, I'll get the military up and running again, and you won't have to worry about this anymore. Democracies that go bankrupt always turn to tyrannies. Well, critical race theory, transgender issues, COVID pandemic, well, these are three hot buttons causing chaos at school board meetings. Parents and board members face off in heated discussions and angry outbursts, and this trend is spilling over into politics. Heather Sells has the details. If you vote for this, we will come for you in a nonviolent way. In August, parents at this Tennessee school board meeting shouted over the superintendent as he announced a decision to go forward with masks. You're telling us how to run our community? then cheered as a deputy escorted a parent out of the room. Such scenes have become common on screens from social media to television news this year. Angry parents protesting COVID policies and other hot topics. Even teachers are showing signs of frustration. And we're not angry about the situation. We can't control COVID. We're angry at you. Dr. Neil McCluskey at the Cato Institute has followed public school conflicts since the mid-2000s, and despite the high-profile tensions, he's seen no dramatic spike nationally. We're certainly seeing more examples of really high anxiety and great anger 
at some school boards. It's hard to tell whether or not we're seeing this sort of as nationally representative. There have always been controversial issues uh, in schools with parents. Former school board president and elementary teacher Dr. Sheila Hill now teaches at Regent University. Over the years, she's watched debates ranging from curriculum to worries over redistricting. Now she's seen the anger in a different light, national issues bubbling up at the local level. What makes it unusual now is that it may be local to that community or that city, but the issue is the same across the nation. And so it's being played up on the news. It's been nationalized. McCluskey's map shows a variety of debates from race to sex ed. What seems to be generating the most heat this year, critical race theory, transgender issues, and the pandemic. People have been very frustrated with COVID-19, and they're just sort of getting fed up, in some cases, with feeling like they don't have control over what's happening with their children. Uh, Hill has empathy say, for school you know, board members. Most people on school boards are on there because of yes, wanting to give back to the community. And McCluskey observes, for many right now, it's a no-win situation. If you are serving diverse communities, and in particular diverse in terms of ideologies and, and values, you can't satisfy all of those different parents. And what's worse is if you choose one group, and that's usually what this comes down to, is a battle for control. If one group gets control, that means another group is not getting what they think is important for their children. So it puts school districts uh, often in an impossible situation. That's leading some school board members to quit, citing the stress. Figure it out or get off the podium. And a record number of recalls this year could force many to step down. One thing's for sure, there's new energy around education across the political spectrum. President Biden has the Department of Education investigating five states with Republican governors that require public schools to allow parents to opt out of mask mandates. Education is also an issue in Virginia's tightening gubernatorial race. As governor, I would not issue a mask mandate for our kids to go back to school. And political reports that in some states like Arizona and Ohio, hundreds are showing up for school board boot camps to learn how to campaign and more about critical race theory. Republicans especially hope the grassroots momentum will re-energize the party. In the end, parents, of course, will have the final say, and it may look like pulling their kids out of public schools. The National Home Education Research Institute reports that numbers have doubled in the last two years. Plus, the Association of Christian Schools International says many schools enrollment jumped by 10 percent last year. For now, Hill encourages parents to use their voices respectfully in the public comment time during school board meetings. If people can work together uh, as opposed to um, shouting and threatening and trying to get their, their views known, that we can probably get through it a lot smoother. Getting along for the sake of the next generation and a nation weary from a pandemic and political anger. Heather Sells, CBN News. Well, these are certainly hot button issues. And you, you look at the hot button issues and what's going to cost someone who is, um, let's just say moderate in their viewpoint to say, I, I just want to have children educated. Are, are they going to want to stay in that position uh, given the current strain? And as Heather pointed out in that piece, people are now resigning from school boards. What I would put forward is the best people are resigning uh, because they just don't want to put up with the heat and the people that are staying are the ideologues. And we've already seen uh, that the school boards, uh, educational system was absolutely targeted uh, by the left to, in order to uh, 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 further an agenda and, and, and remake American culture. So that's already happened, and, and well, I guess the rest of us are finally waking up to it and, and saying no more. But in the process, we're losing the very people that could help us uh, make it through. 
uh, and who's going to be left. So what do we do as people? Well, uh, as a democracy, and hopefully we're still in democracy for a long time, uh, we get to throw the bums out in the next election. Uh, so get involved. If you care about children uh, and are not trying to advance an ideology, but you just want children to get educated, please get involved in your local school board. When his mother became sick, Greg put family first. He became her caretaker and his business suffered. Then the pandemic hit and the business fell even more behind. So why did Greg decide to give away $500 when he needed money the most? And how did it lead to a total financial turnaround? Well, see for yourself. Greg Gargis is the founder of ProChem Scientific and a committed family man. As Greg's widowed mother got older and needed more medical attention, that meant more responsibility on Greg and his wife, Karen. I respect him because he took that full on commitment. He was involved in every part of his mom's care. He ultimately had to let go of all his contracts, but one to tend to his mom, leaving many questions about their financial future. We learned to live on a significantly uh, reduced income, and it was, it was gradually sliding down. Do we have what we're going to need to maintain our life uh, once we were both retired? So we ended up cutting out a lot of uh, unnecessary items from our monthly budget. Still, they never stopped tithing. Being faithful to the Lord, that's too risky to stop tithing. That's part of our lives. The giving continued because I wanted to alert God to the, the fact that uh, we had needs. Uh, I'm committed to this family matter, and, uh, and I was seeking him diligently in the meantime. After Greg's mother passed in late 2018, he gradually began working on ideas to get his business rolling again. Then, the pandemic hit. I had about a close to $20,000 a year loss that it was occurring for the first time ever. However, the couple continued to tithe and pray for God to intervene. I needed his guidance. I needed direction. Finally, Greg got a new contract and knew exactly what he wanted to do with the first payment. Start giving to CBN again. I took what was in my hand, that $500, and I took the entire thing and, and planted it and sowed it into Operation Blessing. Operation Blessing does so much for people in need. Pandemic, tornadoes, hurricanes, natural disasters, I, Operation Blessing is there. And it's usually one of the first ones on scene. So Karen sent the check along with this letter from Greg. To celebrate what the Lord has done in opening a door, I plan to send my first month's pay of $500 to Operation Blessing to help CBN minister to the needing and hurting. Within two weeks, business and income picked up even more. It was a miracle because the phones were dead and all of a sudden he was hearing from clients. I was working from sundown to sunset. It was just like a dam broke and it was just a burst. Uh, I don't want it to stop. Every month since then, just been taking that $500 consulting uh, check and just plowing it right back into CBN. Greg and Karen encourage others to give too. When you give to CBN, you know your money is going to go to promote the kingdom of God. Even though the matters of your own circumstances may be very difficult, don't hold back from Proverbs 28, 27. Give to the poor and you won't lack. You're wondering how to live a spiritual life. What, what do you need to do? Um, follow what Isaiah says. And it's, it's right after God is giving him instructions on, I, I see your fasts, I see your sacrifices, I see all these things. But then he says, this is the fast that I have chosen. And so if you want to, you know, have good graces, if you will, with God Almighty, here is the fast that he's chosen. I want you to share your food with the hungry and to welcome poor wanderers into your homes. Give clothes to those who need them. If you do these things, your salvation will come like the dawn. Then when you call, the Lord will answer, yes, I am here. He will quickly reply. 
Now, Greg said something amazing. He said, I wanted to bring to God's attention my needs. You know, when you call, he will quickly reply. Why? Because you have shared your food with the hungry. You have clothed the naked. You have done these things. You have helped the least of these, my brethren. When you do these things, then your salvation will come like the dawn. When you cry out, God will answer and say, here I am, and he will provide for you. What happened to Greg and Karen can happen to you. What they were doing, taking care of Greg's mom, all of that is really good. But then they put into practice these principles. It's not just in my family. I want to share with those who have need. Here it is, God. I want to show it to you. I'm going to do it faithfully. It's not a one-time thing. I'm going to do it again and again and again. Then your salvation will come like the dawn. Then when you cry, I will answer. I will say, here I am. If you want to start doing that, give us a call, 1-800-700-7000. Just say, I want to help the poor. I want to help the needy. I want to preach the gospel around the world. A portion of every gift to the 700 Club goes into the work of Operation Blessing to feed people right here in America, to provide disaster relief here and around the world, to provide free surgeries for people, to provide water uh, drinking water to provide livelihood programs. You're a part of all of that when you join the 700 Club. Another, another portion goes into preaching the gospel, and we want to do that in every language, every tribe, every tongue. That's our goal. We want to fulfill the Great Commission. If you want to be a part of that, join the 700 Club. Another portion goes into the work of CBN International. Now, how much is it? Well, it's just $20 a month. That breaks out to 65 cents a day, and you're joining tens of thousands of people that say, yes, I want to make a difference. Some of you can join at higher levels. We have $40 a month, $84 a month adds up to $1,000. There's 2,500 club, uh, which is uh, $209 a month. And you can also join the founders at $5,000 a year. At whatever level, do it now, 1-800-700-7000. Terry? Well, when you do join the 700 Club, you're not just helping people in other parts of the world. You're helping people right here in America, like Desiree and her family. Terrified. That's how Desiree described her reaction when a 7.1 earthquake tore through Anchorage, Alaska. She and her husband Terrence were unharmed, but their home was badly damaged. Suddenly, this retired military family faced a financial nightmare. But not for long, thanks to people like you who support CBN's Helping the Home Front. After 28 years of military service, U.S. Coast Guard veteran Terrence and his wife Desiree are enjoying retirement in Alaska. During his career, Terrence deployed multiple times, confident leaving the household in Desiree's capable hands. She took care of everything. She is my rock. She is my support system. Although the challenges of military separations are behind them, the couple faced one of their biggest trials ever when a 7.1 earthquake struck Anchorage. The epicenter registered less than 10 miles from their home. I dropped to my knees and I held onto the side of the bed. Everything fell over that could fall over in every room, in every closet. I was terrified. Their home sustained major damage both inside and out. We had a lot of cracks in our drywall. We got doors that won't close. The floor downstairs is off tilted. The driveway is tore up and it messed up our garage. There's a lot of damage. The repairs totaled $15,000. Because they didn't have earthquake insurance, the couple faced a financial nightmare. It's frustrating that I have to tap into our retirement to get this home in the original state that it was in. It's very upsetting. Despite these overwhelming circumstances, the couple relied on their faith to get through. Whatever needed I put before the Lord, he's going to see us through it. Yes. Their prayers were answered when New Season Church contacted Helping the Home Front. Pastor Tommy Leonard shared the big news. Helping the Home Front wants to take care of all of the contracting costs for your house being repaired. I wasn't expecting to hear that. So there's more. CBN is also going to also take care of all the finishing work. 
They're gonna pay for all the painting. And so we're gonna go down to Home Depot today in order for you to pick out all the paint colors that you desire, that everything can be done and complete and made whole oh, again. Wow, I can't believe that. Mm -hmm. You know, you see this with happening with other people. <laughs> you never, you, you, know, you never would think that it would be you. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. A contractor began the repairs right away as the couple headed to Home Depot to pick out their paint. Their home is now completely restored. I will be forever grateful to CBN for what they're doing and what they do for not just the military, but others outside of the military as well, because they do a great deal. And it's really appreciated. Often today when I'm out in public or traveling, I hear people go up to military uh, veterans, sometimes active military people, and say, thank you for your service. And it's always received so wonderfully and appreciatively by the people who are serving. But I want to say that when you become a 700 Club member and you are a part of helping the home front, that is an extra level of thank you for your service. And I don't know another place where you can do that. Join the 700 Club today because it gives all of us a chance to not only reach out to a hurting world, to people who are suffering through extreme poverty, but right here at home with Americans who have unexpected things come into their lives and we have a chance to touch them right where they're hurting. Gordon already talked about this. 65 cents a day, $20 a month makes you a 700 Club member. Most of us can do that. Some of you already have. If you are a 700 Club member, would you go up to 700 Club Gold at $40 a month or maybe the 1000 Club at $84 a month? We have all the club levels you're looking at there before you. If you haven't joined the 700 Club, this is a tremendous opportunity for you to make a difference in the world and know that you're doing it every single day. So call our toll-free number, 1-800-700-7000. Just say, I want to join the 700 Club. We thank you in advance. Gordon? Well, when you become a CBM partner, you're helping hurting people all over the world. People like Melvin, who lives in Honduras. This young man had a large tumor growing on his jaw. Without surgery, doctors said it would kill him. Melvin felt hopeless because he had no money to pay for the operation. Then he got the best news of his life, courtesy of CBN Partners. Melvin is a farm worker who lives with his wife in a rural community in Honduras. For the past three years, it has been impossible for him to find permanent work because of a tumor that has been growing on his jaw. People have discriminated against me. They say, what happened to you? Why is your face swollen? I had to tell them it was a tooth, so I wouldn't have to explain. Melvin said he worked for anyone that would hire him. One day, I was digging a ditch with a pickaxe. I started to work, but when the sun got hot, I started to bleed from inside my mouth. My foreman told me to leave. Melvin and his wife live with his parents, who have been supporting him. I felt terrible. I couldn't do anything, even if I wanted to. I felt powerless. Melvin's dad also gave him money to go to the city for medical tests. There, a specialist told him that he had a benign tumor and that he needed to have it removed. Without an operation, the doctor said the tumor would grow causing him to lose hearing in his left ear. He also said left untreated, the tumor could kill him. At the clinic, they say, take care of yourself and don't go out in the sun. Come back with the money or we cannot do the surgery. But I could not because I didn't have the money. Then a staff member at the clinic told him about an organization that might be able to help, Operation Blessing. We met with Melvin and gave him the good news. When Operation Blessing told me that they could help me, it was the best news I have ever received in my life. Operation Blessing then arranged for Melvin to receive the surgery he needed. In a complex procedure, a surgeon removed the tumor and part of his jaw and replaced it with a 3D printed prosthetic bone. This was the result. I thank God and all of the donors for helping me. I am grateful because they have changed my life. 
you're a member of the 700 Club, you're part of changing his life. You made it possible to provide that surgery. Now, how much does a surgery like that cost? You look at, well, 3D printing of a jaw and uh, all of that. And the numbers in America would be enormous, but the numbers there in Honduras, here's the actual cost, $3,668. Now, when you look at that number and you're a day laborer in Honduras, well, that is an impossible number. Uh, you can't possibly work hard enough, work long enough, uh, provide for your family, provide food on the table, and still save $3,668. But isn't it amazing that people came together and said, let's help him. Uh, let's be a blessing to him. And when you do that, when, when you give food to the hungry, when, when you give clothes to those who have need, when you provide free surgeries for people, well, then your salvation will come like the dawn. Then when you, when you pray, the Lord will answer quickly and say, here I am. If you're not a member, please join with us. Join in everything we're doing around the world. Call us 1-800-700-7000. If you are, are a member, consider increasing. Consider going to 700 Club Gold at $40 a month. 1,000 Club is $1,000 a year. That breaks out to $84 a month. At whatever level, when you call, make sure you ask for Pledge Express. That's electronic monthly giving. Bank doing all the work we can send as our gift to you. Monthly teaching CDs or downloads now. Uh, a lot of people don't have CD players. Uh, we'll send you a download of these, these Power for Life teachings monthly uh, when you're part of Pledge Express. So if you're not, ask for it when you call or go to cbn.com when you give monthly on the internet you automatically sign up for pledge express we have something new where you can text to give you can text the letter cbn to 71777 and you'll sign up for pledge express well when you join the 700 club we have a special gift for you it's our latest dvd teaching called the nearness of heaven and here's a sample of what you'll see Today we're going to be talking about stories of people who went to heaven. What is heaven like? There's no one suffering in heaven. There's no pain in heaven. Is heaven far away? What does Jesus mean that the kingdom of heaven is within you? Is heaven closer than we think? His body was still in the hospital, but he went to heaven and he had experiences there and then was sent back to his body. The Nearness of Heaven, the latest teaching from Gordon Robertson, available now you can experience the kingdom of heaven right now. CBN presents The Nearness of Heaven. We're going to be talking about people who went to heaven, who had encounters with the kingdom of God. He let me experience what it felt like, and there's more love than you can imagine. In this brand new teaching from CBN, you'll discover what the Bible has to say about heaven and our lives in eternity, how to know for certain that heaven is your future home, how seeking God's presence now will satisfy your heart's desire and prepare you for what's ahead. Plus, how to experience the reality of God's kingdom right here, right now. You're going to experience peace and joy and life to the fullest. Get this exciting new teaching from CBN today. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to become a CBN partner and receive your copy of The Nearness of Heaven. And welcome back to the 700 Club for this CBN news break. The United Kingdom has dropped its case against a Christian preacher police arrested for his street ministry during the COVID lockdown. Mike Overd was preaching, offering prayer, and handing out Bibles last April when the government had ordered churches closed. After reviewing the case, the government has dropped the charges and Overd called it a great victory for Jesus and freedom of speech. Despite the ongoing uncertainty in the Middle East, CBN is still providing Superbook resources to children in the region, online and on the ground. CBN Superbook Arabic YouTube channel features both classical Arabic as well as the dialect spoken in Egypt. It has registered more than one million views this year. Also, the Cairo team has hosted summer school programs for area children and orphans, led volunteer trainings on how to work with the children, and run a medical clinic in partnership with Operation Blessing. 
The team also traveled to Lebanon in June to minister to Kurdish, Armenian, Syrian, and Lebanese children. You can always learn more about what CBN is doing around the world by going to CBN.com slash international. A 1% chance. That's all doctors gave a teenager named Brianna after she fell from a golf cart. The surgeon had to remove a large portion of her skull. So what happened next and how did it lead to a bona fide miracle? Take a look. When I saw her, she was laying in a pool of blood. I, I knew that she was alive because she was breathing, but the thoughts that went through my head were, is she gonna make it? Victoria Koslowski struggled not to panic when she saw her 17-year-old daughter, Brianna, lying unconscious in the street. Brianna and a friend were driving a golf cart in their neighborhood when Brianna fell out, hitting her head on the pavement. After calling 911, her friend called Victoria, who arrived just after the paramedics. As soon as I saw her laying on the ground, my knees collapsed. Her eyes rolled, were rolled back in the back of her head, and she was non-responsive. Brianna was taken to the nearest hospital, then flown to the trauma center at Advocate Lutheran General Hospital near Chicago, Illinois. Victoria and her husband raced to get there as quickly as possible. All I can think of is, please God save my daughter, please don't take her from me. Neurosurgeon Dr. Egan Doppenberg and his team were waiting when Brianna arrived. She had increased pressure inside the brain because of that blood clot that physically just takes up space inside the skull and her pupillary response uh, was not present. That means that there potentially is some serious damage uh, on a deep level in the brain. So we were extremely concerned at that point. He said, I don't know how to tell you this, but your daughter is in critical condition, but she has this 1% chance and I wanna give it to her. Dr. Doppenberg said the first step was to relieve the pressure on Brianna's brain by removing a large portion of her skull. If you don't do this, what's gonna happen? The brain swells, there's nowhere to go, so the pressure inside the skull goes up. It just you know, didn't look good at all, that I could not predict what the outcome would be. With her daughter in surgery, Victoria sent out urgent requests for prayer. I was posting everywhere about her accident, and I was praying, asking and pleading for everyone to pray for her. Brianna survived the six-hour surgery, However, only time would tell how much, if any, brain function she would have. Constantly, medication is being tweaked, ventilators are changed, fluids are being rearranged to create that optimum scenario where the intracranial pressure stays within normal. He's like, we don't know exactly how long it's going to be before she can come back to herself. And if she does, we don't know how much of herself she is going to come back. With Brianna in a medically induced coma, Victoria visited her daughter every day as loved ones, friends, and their Christian community continued to pray. The presence of the Holy Spirit was definitely in her room and I could feel it, um, especially when I would play the soft music and I would start to pray. After three weeks, the swelling in Brianna's brain had gone down enough for doctors to bring the young girl out of her coma they would soon find out if there was any brain damage. At one point, I prayed and I asked God, please, whatever you do, I don't care how you give her back to me, as long as you give her back to me. Incredibly, soon after waking up, Brianna was able to move her eyes on command. Well, we still had a long way to go, but it was the first step in the right direction. While doctors were cautious, Victoria saw it as a sign that prayers were being answered. She was coming back. Not just that she's alive, but the fact that we see neural functions now, we see eye movement, she's recognizing people, she's seeing people in the room. That was very, very exciting. Brianna improved rapidly and was soon moved out of ICU to a regular hospital room. She was disoriented at first, but it was a good sign. It was definitely encouraging to see how quickly she was recovering. Two weeks later, she was transferred to a rehab hospital. Brianna would have a remarkable recovery as her cognitive and motor skills continued to improve quickly. Then, on October 7th, Brianna went home. Although she still needed more therapy and surgery to close her skull, Brianna and her family were ecstatic. Having her home was 
such a load off my shoulders because at this point I knew that she was doing good and she was gonna be okay. When I got home from the hospital, I was praying, thanking God for giving me a second chance at life. A month later, Dr. Doppenberg patched the hole in Brianna's skull with a 3D printed panel, marveling at her recovery. All my colleagues and, and everybody that has been involved in her care are like, yeah, it is a miracle. Brianna and her family are grateful for the doctors and all who prayed, knowing that ultimately it was God's touch that gave Brianna healing and a second chance at life. You were to meet her today, you would never think she ever even had an injury. I was just so incredibly happy and so grateful and thankful for every single person that sent me prayers because all those prayers saved my life. Sometimes we pray and things are not granted to us or things are granted to us in a different way. But God has very mysterious ways of working. God is by our side every waking moment. He watches over us and I have this connection with him that I never had before. And nothing is too hard for him. That is a miraculous recovery. Here is another one. Debbie of Reynoldsville, Pennsylvania, suffered with acid reflux and was diagnosed with Barrett's esophagus, duodenal polyps, esophageal hiatal hernia, esophageal ulcer, and gastroduodenitis. Debbie was watching the 700 Club last July and heard Gordon say, someone, you have a tremendous burning in your esophagus. You're worried that doctors will say it's precancer that it's turning into cancer. God is just healing that, and you have just felt a touch go through, and the burning is now gone. Be healed now. Every cell in your esophagus be normal. No more irritation, scarring, or inflammation. No more acid, and no more problems in Jesus' name. Debbie claimed her healing. When her doctor did an endoscopy, he saw no further inflammation. He cleared Debbie of all esophagus and acid-related issues, and she <laughs> is completely healed. That's a miracle. Yeah, that is, I remember that word. It was so detailed, and uh, wow, well, praise God. Here's Annie from Texas. Mm. She had been praying for a friend, Joe, who was in the hospital, had pneumonia, battling it. Watching the 700 Club, Terry came with a word of encouragement. Someone, you've been praying for a long time about something. I don't know if it's physical, financial, or psychological. God is in the midst of changing your situation. Lift your hands up and begin to thank and praise the Lord before you even see what is being done. That's a key to miracles. And he believed God for Joe's healing. That's a key to miracles. And the very next day, Joe was declared pneumonia-free and released from the hospital. Mm. What's the key to miracles? Thank him. Come into his presence with thanksgiving. Mm. Don't blame him for the accident. Don't blame him for the disease. Don't say, God, you weren't running the universe right today. Don't do anything like that. Here's how you get a miracle. Jesus said it clearly in Mark chapter 11. Believe that you have already received, and you will have it. When was your miracle? Well, it was 2,000 years ago when Jesus died for you. By his stripes, we were healed. Thank him for providing the solution before you even got into the problem. Isn't that amazing? Mm. That's how much he loves you. You thank him for that. And when you come into his presence with thanksgiving, then you get what you ask for. Lord, we come to you. We come with thanksgiving. We come with hands raised to say thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for giving yourself as a sacrifice for us. Thank you that by your stripes I am healed. Thank you for all that you have done for me. Thank you. You heal all our diseases. You forgive all our iniquities. Thank you for it. Terry, God's given you some. Yes, yeah, someone, you've had some kind of an accident. Um, 
it's to your spine and you're going to know this as you it's like the lower part of you your back and you wear this brace that's kind of like a gadget because it hasn't been healing well god's healing that right now all of that bone is being fused back together and you will be completely healed at the end of this in jesus name Someone with gallstones you're being healed of it right now in jesus name amen if you've been healed, let us know. Give us a call, 1-800-700-7000. Here's a word. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow.